everyone, this is Elena. Welcome to part 2 of our two-part special featuring all you need to know about the most popular work passes in Singapore. In part 1, Kay has shared in detail everything about S-Pass and Employment Pass. So if you haven't watched that episode, do remember to catch it on our YouTube channel. Now, in today's episode, we are going to do a deep dive into the Personalised Employment Pass, also known as PP, and the Overseas Networks and Expertise Pass, also known as One Pass. Without further ado, let's begin! To give you an overview of what the PP promises, these are the following points that you can look forward to. Firstly, the biggest difference between a PP and a regular work pass such as S-Pass or Employment Pass is that the PP is personal to you. It is not tied to any company which means that whenever you want to change jobs within Singapore, your employer doesn't have to apply for a new pass for you. Do know that however for certain professions such as doctors and lawyers, you are still required to possess the necessary local licenses to practice in Singapore. Next is that this pass gives you the flexibility to stay in Singapore for up to 6 months even if you are unemployed. So compared to a regular S-Pass or Employment Pass which only allows you to stay in Singapore for up to 2 months without a job. Next, having a PP also makes it easier for your prospective employer in Singapore because you do not require a foreign worker quota or levy. Lastly, being a PP holder allows you to apply dependent passes for your legally married spouses and children under 21 or for your aged parents a long-term visit pass. Now the difference between a PEP and a regular work pass such as S-Pass or EP is that S-Pass and EP holders may not meet the minimum salary requirements to sponsor a dependent or a long-term visit pass. However, if you hold a PEP, definitely you would have met the minimum salary requirement. Now as you're watching this, you could be wondering, so do I qualify for a PEP? Now the short answer is yes you can if you meet the minimum salary requirement of a fixed monthly salary of $22,500 every month for the past 12 months. This figure is benchmarked against the top 10% of the existing EP holders in Singapore. And if you are an overseas foreign professional watching this and you would also like to work in Singapore with a PEP, Yes, you can apply for PEP provided you have met the minimum salary requirements and you cannot be unemployed for more than 6 months at the time of application. Now, there are a few conditions under which your PEP will not be granted and they are <clears throat> Firstly, if you are a freelancer who does not intend to have a Singapore employer. Next, you are an existing EP holder whereby your EP is issued under the sponsored EP scheme. Next, if you are a sole shareholding partner, proprietor or director in any Singapore registered entities on ACRA. Now, the rationale behind it is that the PEP is designed for highly skilled professionals to have the flexibility to change jobs while advancing their career in Singapore. And lastly, your profession cannot be a journalist, editor, sub-editor or producer. Now, a PEP once granted will be valid for 3 years and may be reviewed on a yearly basis on the following two conditions. Firstly, you are not allowed to be unemployed for a period of more than 6 months at any point in time. Next, you need to earn a fixed monthly salary of at least 270000 per calendar year regardless of the number of months that you are employed in that year. And here are a few additional points to take note of if you are a PEP holder. Firstly, a PEP is non-renewable and only valid for 3 years. So if your PEP is expiring, do quickly inform your existing employer so they can apply an employment pass or other relevant work passes for you to stay and work legally in Singapore. Lastly, you are not allowed to start a business or conduct any form of entrepreneurial activity while on a PEP. So if you have plans to do so, you should consider switching over to an entrepreneur pass or an overseas networks and expertise pass. 
Next, we have the latest pass that's launched by the Ministry of Manpower, which is the Overseas Networks and Expertise Pass. It's quite a mouthful, so we call it the One Pass. And it is meant for the creme of the crop. They are usually top talent in business, but not just that, also arts and culture, sports, academia and research. Let's look at some of the unique aspects of OnePass. Firstly, exemption from campus and fair consideration framework for job advertising requirements. Next, flexibility to start, operate or work for multiple companies at any one point in time. Of course, this is also subjected to the employment contract that you may have between you and your employer. Next, there is no need for you to reapply for a new work pass whenever you change jobs. Also, you will immediately be eligible to apply for dependent passes and long-term visit passes for all your eligible family members. Lastly, your spouse will be eligible to apply for work under a letter of consent. Now, I know the above may sound really exciting and you must be wondering, how do I qualify for a one pass? Now, these are the eligibility requirements for a one pass. Now, when we talk about the eligibility requirements, we can look at it from two categories. The first category being income. Now, in income, we can look at it from three scenarios. The first scenario is if you are already an existing work pass holder, earning a fixed salary of $30,000 monthly for the past 12 months. Now, the second scenario is if you are earning this $30,000 on a monthly basis, but your company is based overseas. Then this overseas company needs to prove to the Ministry of Manpower that it is well established. In MOM's eyes, the term well established refers to a company with a market capitalization or valuation of at least 500 million USD or having an annual turnover of at least 200 million USD. Now, in this final scenario, you have not landed this 30,000 fixed money salary job yet, but you soon will be because you have received such an offer from a prospective employer based in Singapore. Now, there are two conditions to fulfill in such a scenario. Firstly, you need to have the offer letter on hand by this company. And secondly, this company needs to also be a well-established company as mentioned earlier. If you don't qualify under the income requirements, fret not because the next category may apply for you, which is to apply under outstanding achievements in the fields of arts and culture, sports, or even academia and research. So how do you prove your outstanding achievements? Essentially, you need to draft a fantastic curriculum vitae that can outline all your key achievements in such fields. Additionally, in the areas of academia and research, your CV will need to include outstanding achievements such as your patents, your publications, and technology disclosures in the past five years. And you will also need to have an endorsement letter or a letter with a position offered in one of our local host institutions. These local host institutions include ASTAR and our local autonomous universities. So that's it for our two-part special on everything you need to know about the most popular type of work passes in Singapore. Now, I know at this point in time, you may have tons of questions, which is why we are going to add on a special episode addressing all the frequently asked questions about these work passes. So be sure to keep a lookout for that special episode. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in our comment section below, or you can visit our website at tip.com.sg for more information. You can even schedule a one-on-one -on -one complimentary consultation with us today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!